Good morning, students. So far, we have uh, studied uh, half of the chapter, uh, the interview uh, uh, by Christopher Sylvester, where he is talking about uh, matters of interviews, uh, uh, pros and cons of interviews, uh, different opinions of the celebrities or the uh, distinguished writers or the poets or the playwright or the essayist or the novelist uh, uh, about uh, the term interview. Uh, uh, the term interview can be easily uh, defined. Let me uh, put some recap in front of you uh, that it is a structure uh, communication generally between two uh, uh, where uh, one participant uh, 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 provides answer uh, to the queries put up by the other one. Uh, generally, it uh, takes place uh, face to face, one on one communication, but with the assurance of uh, the techno savvy world, now oh, it, it can be conducted, interview can be held okay, uh, via uh, uh, video conferencing. We see also, though it is not uh, compulsory, mandatory. Okay, to have both of the people on the same place. They can be geographically separated and still an interview can be conducted there. Furthermore, uh, 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 the things which were important from this particular chapter uh, were uh, uh, how the distinguished of the iconic writers or the novelist or the essayist, uh, they opine uh, uh, about interview. And uh, one common thing, uh, unanimously accepted by all the celebrated uh, writers, poets, that an, uh, it is an unethical uh, thing, it is an immoral thing, it is uh, almost a crime and deserves punishment. Be it uh, V.S. Naipaul or uh, 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 Lewis Carroll or uh, Rudyard Kipling, uh, all agree, uh, uh, complied with one uh, statement that interview uh, uh, is not a thing for the gentleman or a respected person there. Furthermore, we have studied about uh, Amber J. Co. An infame uh, writer though, novelist though, uh, but basically he is uh, uh, an academic genius who is a professor in Bologna University in Italy and who writes novels on uh, Saturdays there. Now, Mukut uh, the reporter, an as reporter uh, for the Hindu Okay, has reached uh, to the place of uh, uh, Mr. Mbatoiko and uh, he is all set to take an interview. And now he is uh, reaching at the spot where the board of the residence of Mbatoiko is there and is, uh, they are waiting uh, for uh, Mukut Padmanabhan okay, uh, to give an interview and he is liking it. Uh, first time we come across uh, that uh, a celebrated writer is uh, showing uh, what we can say, it's a uh, liking about uh, the term interview, which was not mentioned so far okay, in the chapter. Now, uh, we resume the journey. Mukul, not everyone can do that, of course, sir. Not everyone uh, can do uh, that, of course, sir. That refers to uh, the multifaceted genius of uh, uh, Ambatriko has been highlighted here, has been connoted here. Uh, what is that uh, referring here? that when Mukun was there in the elevator in the lift okay meanwhile in those five to eight minutes there where and another person who is uh, gonna to be interviewed may be taking care of his uh, attire may be taking care of his appearances there meanwhile he uh, successfully wrote an article and even he enjoys uh, by laughing it also Mr. Mbatoiko and this is uh, a unique peculiar uh, quality uh, uh, that Mr. Ambatoko purchased uh, in those days uh, that he could uh, uh, use the indecisis uh, meaningfully uh, uh, with a remarkable approach by writing a, 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 an article or any other literary thing there. And this is the quality really found uh, uh, among the people that was uh, stated by Ambatoko. This uh, means that not everyone can do uh, that of course uh, not every uh, one can utilize uh, the indecisis in the way you did sir it is the meaning of that your non-fictional writing uh, fictional obviously uh, based on some hypothetical uh, states there uh, imaginary one and non-fictional 
obviously has got uh, something to do with the realistic life. A non-fictional writing, your scholarly work has a certain playful and personal quality about it. Obvious, these are the two qualities of the writer, uh, the writings of uh, Mr. Ambarjo Eko have been highlighted here. Playful is manner, joyous is a way, and obviously second one, the personal quality about it uh, means uh, 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 the writings, please uh, uh, have your heed, have your uh, uh, attention on that. The writings, non-fictional writings of Ambacho Eko is a marked departure, is a marked departure uh, from the personalized writing of the other writers of that era or the uh, contemporaries there. It means the contemporaries of Ambacho Eko wrote more on a depersonalized mode whereas the writings of Ambajoiko was personalized. How you can distinguish depersonalized or the personalized? Depersonalized has got no connection with the real personality, a real emotion uh, uh, or reality of a person as an individual. Whereas uh, uh, personalized manner, yes, has got the realistic appeal has got the personal touch and has got some emotion interwoven of humanity. This is the uh, differentiation between personalized manner of writing or depersonalized manner of writing. And here, um, but, um, but because writings are a clear cut, a vivid uh, and avid uh, or the, a clear departure uh, 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 okay, from depersonalized uh, mode of writing. Uh, personality quality about it, it is a marked departure, clear departure from a regular academic style which is followed by rest of his contemporaries, which is invariably, which is invariably uh, the depersonalized writings, which is invariably always depersonalized and often dry and boring. Dry and boring are the two characteristics of depersonalized way of writing. That was the type, that was a, a, a style of his contemporaries. And what was the type of Ambajiko's writing? Personalized. His contemporaries? Depersonalized. Two adjectives about, uh, about uh, the, the depersonalized writings. It was dry and it was boring. Monotonous way was adopted by uh, the writers of that era. Uh, uh, but he was an exception. Ambajiko was an exception. Um, uh, uh, depersonalized and often dry and boring. Have you cons consciously, uh, uh, means uh, uh, deliberately, uh, uh, intentionally, okay, uh, having the awareness of uh, adopted an informal approach? Uh, obviously, uh, when we talk about uh, personal writing, it must be informal. Personal belongs to uh, informality there, obviously. The others one uh, were uh, just having a go uh, with uh, the depersonalized mode, whereas uh, uh, the writings of Albert Eco uh, was having emotion, was having sentiments, having individuality, having realistic ap uh, appeal and approach, and therefore it was liked by more people of that era. An informal approach, or is it something that just came naturally to you? Uh, Mukul is uh, putting uh, up a query that uh, the manner, the mode, the type uh, in which Mr. Albert Eco did write his old literary stuff there. Uh, was it all uh, natural for him or he really put a great effort to become a personalized writer? Was it all natural, spontaneous to him or he put an extreme effort to be like that fellow, to like that uh, sort of chap, to, like, uh, to be uh, like uh, uh, a master class, a, a spearhead of personalized writing of that era? So was it natural or he put uh, a, a real effort for that as a constant basis? Eco replies, when I presented my first doctoral dissertation, dissertation theory, dissertation theory, uh, uh, you see when we talk about uh, this word doctoral dissertation, generally those people who apply uh, for uh, uh, some university diploma and degree, uh, especially to become a professor associate professor, college lecturer, okay, uh, uni university uh, 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 lectures, uh, generally they are supposed uh, 
to have uh, their PSD uh, uh, have uh, they are in their pocket there. Or if you wish to uh, uh, get the diploma and degree of PSD, doctorate in, in short we can call it there, you need to uh, delve into a research, a thesis, a theory on a certain subject. Then only you will be awarded, you will be rewarded with the degree and diploma of a, a PhD. So he's talking about his flashback time when he uh, was undergoing his degree of a, a, a PhD and doctoral uh, dissertation. Uh, in Italy, in Bologna obviously, one of the professors said, scholars learn a lot of certain subject, uh, uh, then they make a lot of false hypothesis. Hypothesis, imaginary uh, things there. Hypothesis, imaginary facts there. So, uh, uh, one of the professors, uh, maybe his personal experience about uh, the same uh, was enforcing him to uh, uh, share his views okay, uh, uh, with his students. So, uh, he said uh, to Ambatrico and various students who were there in the class there, that a scholar, a, a person with great intellectual approach, a person with great scholastic appeal, learns a lot of things uh, in a daily basis uh, stuff there or when he day-to-day -day life uh, teaches him a number of lessons he not only observes those things minutely, meticulously uh, but also uh, grasp, uh, learns a lot out of it. A lot of us and obviously uh, when uh, we come across uh, many of the sights and the vision and the uh, phenomena in our life there we tend to, uh, uh, to, 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 to uh, what you can say uh, delve into some sort of imaginary things also. It is uh, uh, natural to each and every human to create, uh, to uh, have a go, uh, uh, to have a visit in the world of our imagination. And obviously that is uh, far more uh, 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 distant from the world of reality. Hypothesis, then they correct them and at the end they put the conclusions. Uh, you, on the contrary, told the story of your research, even including your trials and errors, at the same time, he recognized I was right and went on to publish my dissertation, my theory, my thesis, dissertation, theory, thesis as a book, which meant he appreciated it there. There are two uh, types of writers, in, uh, according to this paragraph, uh, who makes all the thesis, who makes all the theory, who makes all the investigation, who, who makes all the research work uh, 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 away uh, from the readers there. Okay, and readers have got no idea how uh, the person who uh, was uh, getting his PhD done collected those facts, collected uh, uh, those uh, thesis work there from which particular uh, place, from which particular person, by which particular experience. They don't talk, they don't discuss about uh, their uh, journey uh, to reach that goal. But on the contrary, opposite to it, missed and what sort, uh, sort of tri uh, trials and errors? Trials and errors is a method of learning when a particular person uh, puts some sort of effort to learn something, makes error and he learns out of his mistakes. That is called trials and errors method there. So, trials and error uh, uh, is a natural thing, it is a spontaneous thing that every writer has to undergo and test the flavor of a trials and error method. But, they don't discuss it in their uh, thesis, they don't discuss it in their research work, they don't publish those things in their uh, book, in their narrations there. But on the contrary, Mr. Amberto Eco also obviously undergoes uh, the, 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 the stream, the streak of trials and errors, what type of tough task, what type of tough test, what type of mistakes or, uh, uh, okay, he, he, he committed during the course of his PhD and he narrates it is all good and bad experience okay till he reaches his goal successfully in front of the readers openly and this is the first time this was a peculiar that was a unique thing that the writers or the poets or the phd holder people the scholars are discussing uh, okay are sharing uh, their uh, 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 good and bad uh, moves during the course of their phd time there this is uh, the unique thing that separates uh, uh, distinguishes, uh, differentiates, uh, 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 takes uh, Ambatoiko away uh, from his contemporaries. Huh? That was a unique thing in Ambatoiko's uh, writing stuff there. My dissertation, uh, okay, and, and when 
I uh, published it when because you, you one more thing. Okay, you must know when a particular person undergoes the degree and diploma of a PhD, he has to do it under someone's guidance, someone's coaching, someone's tutelage, someone's tutelage, someone's patronage. Means you can't straight away uh, uh, get the degree by appearing in an examination. You need to uh, 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 get the guidance. You need to get uh, the the, the tutelage of a, a senior professor or a, 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 what you can say a, a lecturer of a, a, a university or a college who himself has done a PhD okay also and yes been imparting uh, okay his own knowledge uh, and assistance uh, to the junior ones there so he, he, he requested his uh, uh, senior professor under whom he was doing his PhD it's sir uh, I want to Ambatiko, he said to his professor that he wanted to publish all the stuff, whatever he underwent during the course of his uh, uh, training period of PhD there. Trials and errors, whatever mistakes he committed and how he was able to overcome uh, those mistakes. He wanted to publish that thing also and he wanted to give that to the reader straight off, which never happened before. And you know, the professor under whom he was doing his PhD was convinced and it means what? If he was convinced by that idea, it means he appreciated it there. Ambatiko replied to the query of Mukul about his personalized writing and uh, trials and errors uh, to be published in his thesis with uh, uh, his uh, ultimate uh, publications went with PhD uh, degree and diploma. At that point, at the age of 22, at, during that time, the Ambatiko um, age was 22, I understood scholarly books should be written the way I had done, by telling the story of the research, the, all the struggle time must be mentioned, all the uh, 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 bad and uh, good time must be mentioned, all the mistakes and how we resolve those mistakes, overcame that mistake, must be published. Uh, this is uh, why my essays always have a narrative aspect, narrative, subjective, narrative, subjective. Uh, and obviously, if uh, the aspect of someone's writing is a narrative one, yes, it would be able to uh, fetch the attention or the fascination or the imagination of the readers more than other writers do. Aspect, and this is why probably I started writing narratives, novels, subjective writings, uh, the lengthy writings, the, uh, the, the, the vastness uh, of the writings belong to the narratives there. And novel writing is a part of long narratives there. Therefore, I started writing novels uh, so late at the age of 50, more or less there. So you see, uh, uh, at the age of 50, uh, it wasn't a, a good age to be, to, to be a novelist. Generally, those people who become novelists, they, uh, okay, they generally start uh, showing their interest and putting their effort in the age of 22, 23, 24, or let it be 25 at max. But he was a professor, full-time, a writer, but at the age of 50, he, he suddenly thought, uh, that uh, let us uh, be uh, a novelist there. Maybe the reason that so far whatever uh, he has written down, okay, as a writer, he was not able to 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 uh, 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 what is it? Contact, uh, uh, get connected with more number of people there. There may be readers, there may be his fan following, but maybe around thousand to five, seven, ten, uh, fifteen like that. But when he became or uh, uh, decided to become a novelist, and when the first uh, novel, that for the name of the rose, the history created stuff there, the wonderful, the historic novel written by Ambato Eko, and yes, it soon grabbed the attention and the interest of worldwide readership there. And then he was able to touch more hearts, he was able to uh, uh, catch and uh, draw the attention of more people. Being a novelist or being a writer, being a professor, it was not possible. So, in order to grab the attention of more, in order to touch the uh, more readers, he became a novelist there, which was not possible for him uh, Okay, uh, to do so uh, by being uh, a, a professor of a university or a writer of some semiotics there. Semiotics, a uh, study of sign and symbol there. Uh, it has got three types, icon, symbols and sign. Semiotics, semiology, semiosis is a study of sign and symbol. It, it has got three types, icon, index and sign there. More than enough for you. No need to study more or uh, get yourself uh, deeper, delve into this thing there. Semiotics, 
study of sign and symbol. It has got three types, index, a icon, and a sign there. And Umberto was a master on semiotics. I remember that my dear friend, uh, Roger Bathis, was always frustrated that he was an essayist and not a novelist there. You see, uh, though they, uh, Roger Bathis and Umberto both were good friends, uh, but you see, when we see our friend getting more popular, not jealousy I would use, but yes, Bathis felt a bit envious, but jealous of the increasing name and fame and the popularity and uh, uh, the position of Umberto Eco there. And he didn't like that because Bathis uh, was an essayist and Umberto Eco was uh, a novelist there. So obviously after the publication of uh, Name of the Rose, he, he became an iconic uh, uh, figure uh, of the, uh, the literature society. And when Bathis uh, uh, knew, because being a friend, he could see the increasing name and fame of Umberto Eco. So he, he, he was frustrated. He was irritated. Oh, yeah. he, many times he said, oh, Umberto Eco, oh, uh, I really feel uh, uh, damned to my, uh, 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 look damned there to, to, to my occupation uh, of my uh, work there. I'm an essayist. I don't like to be an essayist there. I should have been a novelist there. He showed his grievances many times to Mr. Umberto Eco. Being a friend, being a friend. Uh, he wanted to create, he wanted to do creative writing. He wanted to do creative writing. It means he wanted uh, to be a novelist there. Uh, when you are an essayist like uh, uh, Rosa Bathis was there, you can't be a, a creative fellow because uh, essays will be uh, based on certain theme, certain subject and you cannot drift here and there away from it there. You got to stick to glue to, to a certain topic but if you are a novelist, oh, the entire horizon uh, of uh, curiosity uh, uh, is open for you there. You can use your whole imagination uh, far and wide and uh, uh, can write your stuff according to your wish and imagination. Uh, he didn't like it uh, to be an essayist, uh, this uh, uh, Roland Barthes. He could do so. I never felt this kind of frustration. I started writing novels by accident. But Umberto made it clear that he was not frustrated when he was a professor, when he was a writer. He became a novelist by chance, by accident. And how accidentally Umberto became a novelist? Check it out. I had nothing to do one day. One day. And so I started writing novels and probably satisfied my taste of narration. Narration, descriptive uh, longings there. One who writes, uh, who wishes to write, one who longs to write, uh, subjective thing, long thing, uh, okay, in literary stuff there. This is called uh, subjective stuff. Narration, uh, novel writing is the part of narration or subjective writings there. And one day he was uh, having nothing to do and suddenly became a, a novelist there. Uh, getting too much humble. It is not that much easy that oh, someone was doing nothing. He thought to be a novelist there. It gets a real effort there. But he was getting a bit humble. Mukul, talking about novels from being a famous academic, you went on to become a spectacularly, marvelously, spectacularly, marvelously famous after the publication. Surpri spectacularly uh, you know, means surprisingly uh, popular there. Huh? Uh, spectacularly famous after the publication of the name of the rose. You have written five novels against the many more scholarly works of non-fiction there. So he was a novelist but many non-fiction writing also he has taken down. Basically let me tell you he was a novelist after but when he started his career in literature field there he was a non-fiction writer. At least more than 20 of them. Mukun uh, anticipated that around 20 books might have been written non-fictional. Year 20 refers to non-fictional writing of Ambatiko. Year 20 refers to non-fictional writing of Ambatiko so far. Huh? Till he became novelist. 20 I think you might have taken down the non-fictional writing. Ambatiko makes a correction. No, here not 20. It is 40. 40 non-fictional writings I have uh, written so far. I have done so far. Over 40. Amazing. Oh my God. Among them, seminal piece of work on semiotics. Among those 40, there is a piece of semiotics. Seminal, very impressive. Seminal, very imposing. Seminal, okay, uh, what you can say, which can uh, draw the attention of many people. Impressive, imposing. But ask uh, most people about Tampachiko and they will say, oh, he is a novelist. 
Does that bother you? Though he was a writer, he was a professor, and he was a novelist. According to Mukund Padnabhan, uh, that particular thing may be bothering Mr. Ambatiko when the people uh, uh, take him okay, as a novelist rather than a man from academy or a great scholar or an intellectual. Does this bother you, Ambatiko? Mukund asks. Ambatiko, yes, of course, it bothers me. I don't like to be called a novelist. You see, he didn't want it. Uh, he, he, he didn't want to uh, be called uh, a uh, uh, novelist because, let, let me uh, go further, he goes, yes, because I consider myself a university professor who writes novels on Sundays. Please underline this famous line. According to Ambatrico, he basically is a professor in a university who writes novel on Sundays whenever he got free time. Sundays here. Obviously, Sunday means Sunday the day, but also means whenever he is uh, having leisurely hours. Uh, most people, okay, that's, uh, yes, because I consider myself university professor who writes novels on Sundays. It is not a joke. Yes, I mean it. I am a professor, basically. I participate in academic conferences, academic seminars, academic conferences, academic seminars where the scholars uh, do meet, uh, okay, uh, uh, in a meeting is called uh, academic conferences and not meetings of pen club and the writers. He, he, he uh, doesn't feel proud to be the part of the pen club meeting or the writers meeting because he thinks himself a scholar, an academic uh, fellow and he uh, believes himself a full-time professor who writes novel only on Sundays. With uh, and Please underline this. I identify myself with academic community. Mr. Ambajiko likes to be remembered by the people as a scholar, as a, a man of academics, uh, as a professor who writes Sundays, who writes on Sundays, his uh, uh, past, favorite pastime, writing novels. But okay, if they, most people, uh, have read only the novels, laughs and shrugs, no issue. Laughs and shrug, ha ha, no issue. If they take me as a novelist, no issue. Shrugging, moving your shoulder in uh, uh, humbleness, obviously. Uh, it's okay. It doesn't bother me. I participate in academic conference and not meetings of pen club and this and myself with it. If they uh, have read only the novels, laughs and shrugs, I know that my uh, by writing novels I reach a larger audience. That is the truth. That is a truth. Absolutely. That's true. That yes, by writing novels, Mr. Ambatrico was able to reach more audience. Being a writer, being a professor, he could reach around 5,000, 6,000. But uh, being uh, a novelist, millions of people, millions of readership he was connected with. Uh, but I couldn't expect uh, uh, to have one million readers with stuff on semiotics there. Semiotic, non-fictional stuff there. Uh, uh, a study of sign and symbol, he would not be able to uh, reach, he would not be able to get more uh, uh, readers and more audience there. But when you talk about uh, uh, being a novelist, yes, lots of people you can uh, get connected with. Mukul, which brings me to my next question. The name of the rose is a very famous, is a very serious novel. It is a detective yarn based on some murder mystery, based on some murder mystery, and if murder is there, mystery uh, will be there, and a detective must be there. So it is a detective yarn, a spy story. It is a spy story based on historic murder mystery. Uh, uh, no one label uh, detective yarn at one level, but it also delves, it also plunges into, res research into, goes into metaphysics, uh, theology, and metabolistry. Underline these three contains three components of uh, name of the rose. Though it was a detective, please and uh, do write uh, uh, a paragraph there. The name of the rose uh, was uh, the first novel of Ambatrico that grabbed the attention of the entire world. Almost 10 to 15 million copy, uh, copies were sold. Detective Yarn it was, but also delves into, I will uh, tell you the meaning of these three things. First, first you write, it also delves into researches, delves researches into metaphysics, theology, 
and medieval uh, medieval history medieval history uh, the history of middle ages huh? metaphysics metaphysics is a branch of philosophy metaphysics is a branch of philosophy that examines the fun that examines the fundamental nature of reality that examines the fundamental 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 nature of reality it also it also discusses it also discusses the relationship relationship between mind and matter mind and matter substance substance and abstracts potential and actuality please uh, do write it again uh, metaphysics in in other word in easy language we can uh, have it metaphysics a uh, study of the elements that form universe based on knowledge truth based on existence truth and reality based on truth knowledge and existence i repeat it again metaphysics is a branch of philosophy that examines that examines the fundamental nature of reality one second it is a study of the elements that form that formed our universe it also it also discusses the relationship between mind and matter mind and matter potential and actuality potential and actuality existence truth and knowledge of humanity of humans of humans that is called metaphysics theology a study of theology literary essays theology literary essays based on uh, 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 certain subject of uh, what you can say that uh, aesthetic senses there theology literary essays literary essays and medieval history history belongs to middle ages there history belong to middle ages theology uh, the literary device uh, literary essays based on a spiritual aspect based on spiritual aspects in uh, it enjoyed a huge massadens were you puzzled at all by that though it was the part of uh, uh, it was based on uh, a serious thing serious thing serious matter serious subject metaphysics theology okay now are not the words like by the common people like by the common people but still it attracted the huge number of audience how it all happened enjoyed a huge audience were you puzzled at all by that or but you go no journalist are puzzled not me and sometimes the publishers Uh, and uh, it's uh, and this is because journalists and publishers believe that people like trash and don't like difficult reading experience there generally happy uh, 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 experience the all uh, readers generally go for that and you see uh, name of the rose became popular though it had a, a, a serious content it had got a, a serious theme based on metaphysical aspect based on theological stuff based on uh, medieval vivian not so easy okay not easy experience uh, generally the uh, the people uh, uh, okay uh, will be having but still uh, it, it was uh, able to attract the uh, legs of people towards it how it all uh, happened there trash uh, the people uh, trash here uh, the, the readers wish to have easy reading experience trash here they don't want to uh, read the serious contents there and don't like difficult reading experience consider there are 6 billion people the world population is around 6 billion and on this planet the name of the rose sold between 10 to 15 million copies so in a way i reached only a small percentage of readers there though it uh, was a popular uh, uh, novel but still i was able to touch uh, the readers around uh, 10 to 15 million which is uh, hardly uh, a, a small percentage of the world population but it exactly do, uh, these kinds of readers who don't want uh, in easy experiences there obviously people readers are of two types one who got to have easy experience of reading who doesn't want to trouble their mind while reading and second one the scholars they they want uh, to have some serious uh, uh, reading experience there 
or at least don't always want that okay not always though yes obviously uh, sometime if we are in a light mood we want to uh, uh, read light things if we are serious one day sometime we want to read serious content also but not all the time we'll be wishing to, to uh, we will be wishing to have hard experience tough experience of reading or easy experience of reading there I myself uh, at 9 p.m. after dinner watch television and want to see either Miami Vice and Emergency Room. Miami Vice and the Emergency Room, uh, Emergency Room are the two popular serial, uh, comedy serial, uh, 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 fictional serial of uh, U.S. New United States of America, and he he too uh, 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 watches okay these uh, light uh, uh, serials there. But light serials can be viewed one or two hours, but rest not the entire day long. Uh, Miami Vice are the emergency rooms are the two the serials there. I enjoy it and I need it, but not all day long. I can watch them one or two hours in a day. Light things can be accepted, not all day long. Could the huge success of Mukund puts up another query? Could the huge success of the novel have anything to do with the fact that it dealt with the period of medieval history? Uh, Mukund uh, wants to or wishes to know the secret how no, uh, the name of the rose became a, such a popular, such a famous thing. Was it the same? Uh, was it the uh, reason that since it was based on medieval history, uh, the threads were taken from medieval history uh, there, therefore it became uh, uh, so popular? Is uh, that having anything to do with uh, the success? Uh, since it was based on medieval history, but you go. That's possible, probable, not sure though. But let me tell you another story because I often tell stories like a Chinese wise man. It just, it meant, what is the uh, uh, what what you can say that the the, uh, the characteristic of Chinese wise man? The Chinese wise man type means an old man who tells the story in a very gingerly manner by keeping some secret from the readers so that so that the intensity and the curiosity of the readers could be prolonged till the climax of the writing or the novel or the story. I tell my story like a Chinese wise man. My American publisher said uh, when at the time of uh, the publications of the name of the rose, uh, the editor, the publisher was a, um, was a woman. Okay, and what she uh, said to Ambachiko, my American publisher said, while she loved my books, she didn't expect to sell more than 3,000 copies of Name of the Rose there. Name of the Rose, uh, when it was first published there, the publisher wanted to publish only 3,000 copies because she thought it would not get that much of popularity. Copies in uh, a country where nobody has seen a cathedral or uh, studies Latin there. Cathedral, a big church. Cathedral, big church. People may be God-fearing in America, but they don't often go to churches. Or if they are not God-fearing people, religiously uh, 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 damned people, uh, I, I, she thought that the uh, name of the rose would not be that much popular among uh, those people who are God-fearing, but don't visit uh, the church too often. Coffee where the nobody had seen a cathedral or a studies Latin, so I was given an advance of 3,000 copies at the time of the name of the rose uh, when it was published. Okay, it was uh, uh, he was given only uh, the advance, the money, okay, for 3,000 copies. But in the end, it sold two or three million in US and around the globe, 10 to 15 copies. 10 to 15 million copies of the name of the rose uh, were sold. It was a huge success. A lot of books have been written about the medieval past uh, far before mine and I think the success of the book is a mystery. It is not so, Amber Duke is making it clear, that since Name of the Rose was based on medieval history, uh, therefore it gained a great popularity. Before that also many of the books were based on medieval history, but it didn't click, it didn't get that sort of popularity name and fame then. So we can't really say that it was the only reason of his grand success, that it was based on medieval history. Last two lines, dear. Uh, can uh, uh, I think the success of the book is a mystery. Nobody can uh, uh, predict it. Nobody can guess it. Why it became uh, uh, such a famous novel at the end of the day. Nobody can predict it. Assume it. Predict it. Surmise it. Make a speculation about it. I think if I had written the name of the rose ten years earlier or ten years later, it would not have been the same. Why it worked at the time is still a mystery. I think the timings of the publication. The time when the name of the rose was published, that was a spectacularly timed uh, the novel. Therefore, it became a, 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 a long, a huge, uh, an imperishable success there. 
almost 10 to 15 million copies were sold. If he would have taken down this novel 10 years before or 10 years later, he is uh, uh, suspicious about the success of the uh, name of the rose could have got that much higher, that much uh, uh, ethical okay, among the readers there. Thank you dear. That is the explanation of the chapter over. If you got any query, any problem, please go through, listen to my explanation. Some tough parts are there. Okay, time and again. And still you have got a query, please feel free to contact me, WhatsApp me. Okay, thank you.